Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here on this stormy Sunday afternoon here, August the 9th, 2020. Pretty good thunderstorm going on here in the Wilmington, North Carolina area where I live. So hopefully we don't have any of those viral videos where lightning strikes right out the window, sending debris and shrapnel and flying cats and all that good stuff. You just never know. Anyhow, it's time to talk about the tropics, thunderstorms notwithstanding. We'll try to get through this. A wide shot of the Atlantic Basin and parts of the Eastern Pacific. We have Tropical Storm, I think it's pronounced Elita, over here in the Eastern Pacific. This is going to head on out and not be of any consequence to most people. Maybe sending some waves back towards Mexico as it develops, probably becomes a hurricane. Um, let me bring up the Hurricane Center site. Didn't even do that. I was trying to get all these tabs together and I forgot to do that that's okay so here's the track of it it's gonna go away from Mexico become a hurricane and then die out after it loses its thermodynamic support just a fancy way of saying that it's gonna move over colder water and as such it does lose the latent heat that provides its energy meanwhile we have a orange X out there this is the area that I was talking about yesterday where I was surprised that the National Hurricane Center had not outlooked it. And um, they're on top of it, though. You know, I mean, they gave it 24 hours. It persisted. Some stuff that kind of comes and goes. You know, we all see it because we can watch this stuff every 15 minutes or whatever it is that these satellite images update now. Um, back when I was a kid... Satellite images only updated every hour or every half hour, I do believe. And we also had this thing called a satellite eclipse, where late at night, from like, I don't know, 2 in the morning until 5 in the morning or something like that, there was no satellite images, because the satellite would be between the Earth and the Sun, and the Sun's rays would make the satellite go to sleep. I'm like, that's the... <laughs> I don't want to besmirch the people that built the thing, but really? You know, just a little battery? Yeah, that's a GoPro. <laughs> that used to happen. Now we don't have that, and so we're able to obsess over this. And, um, you know, the Hurricane Center watches it, and they obsess over it too, but in a different manner, I think, than we do. And uh, today, it, well, even 8 p.m. last night, they said, Outlook, there it is. Um, the vorticity signature and other things associated with it, the time of year, all that good stuff. It warranted an outlook, as we call it. It's a verb. It got outlooked. And um, it's in vest area 95L. But notice what's happening. Convection, 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 convection everywhere you look. And that is because the Madden-Julian Oscillation is eventually, gradually moving its way from the Pacific into this area. And, you know, this is a horrible representation of what it looks like. It doesn't look like bow shock waves, but you get the idea. It's just this gradual uh, metamorphosis, literally, in the atmosphere where upward motion is able to um, prosper and take root. And upward motion leads to convection. That's just a fancy word. Another one of those fancy words. You can use this when you're around uh, friends and family. If we ever get to have a Thanksgiving dinner again with 50 people, <laughs> I tell you what, you can toss these words around. You know, those of you going back to college, sit around in your dorms six feet apart and all that that implies and toss these words around. But seriously, upward motion is where the atmosphere can rise, you know, vertically. You need that vertical motion in the atmosphere to create thunderstorms. The thunderstorms lower the air pressure. It creates convergence, air coming together converging and then going up that is how you get hurricanes and we're seeing more and more of that over time here and that'll eventually lead to something it's only a matter of time so out here in the tropical atlantic little area of uh, vorticity there that's not 95l that's just another tropical wave that is 95l and i'm gonna tell you that low latitude that sneaky rascal you got to watch those and then over here is the tropical storm in the eastern Pacific. Uh, really not much in between here. And 
These are so fascinating to watch. You see how round this is getting? Whoops. Click how round this is getting. And it'll continue to do so as it becomes a hurricane uh, over the next few days. So back to the Hurricane Center. Site, 40%, 50%. I think these numbers will go up. I just have a feeling the model is starting to support well, one of the models, at least one, the GFS. Uh, the time of year, the fact that all this region through here is running above normal. Water temperature wise, sea level pressures, generally speaking, below average. Uh, you know, Are they running below average right now? I didn't even check. But we know that July's average mean sea level pressure through this area was the lowest ever, according to Dr. Phil Klotzbach. And I think he knows what he's talking about. That's how we got the PhD. Um, and so, you know, it should go. I would think it's going to develop. Where does it end up and how long does it stay developed? Those, I don't know the answers to those questions there. Um, a close-up of it, though, I mean, wow, you can really see the rotation to it. The overall large cyclonic general turning with this system very easy to identify. It's down there in the intertropical convergent zone. And that that's where it's safe from any dry air intrusions for the time being. And there's dry air around. We can look at this total precipitable water animation from the University of Wisconsin. Have one tropical wave here, a nice high amplitude wave. And then this other one embedded down here in the ITCZ in a tropical convergent zone all through here. And look, there's Elita here in the Pacific. And there's this dry air still trying to come off and kind of squash development. That's what the blue here shows, drier mid-level air. And the dry air does not allow for thunderstorm development. All right, so dry air is obviously dry because it doesn't hold more uh, moisture to speak of. The dew points are lower. So this pocket of dry air is the inhibitor. And I think though that this is going to continue to just kind of scoop on or scoot, not scoop, scoot on to the west northwest and gradually get its act together, moving towards warmer and warmer sea surface temperatures. And I'm going to tell you what, the magic line I have seen over the years is about 45 degrees west longitude, right in there. It's about as straight a line as I can draw. Um, there's 50 longitude right there. So, you know what? We'll say, if not at before 50 west, I think between 40 and 50 west, south of 20, in this box right here, I bet this gets named as it enters that box. That's my projection, my prediction. Um, because this is the area, water temperature is warm. Uh, this system here, this leading tropical wave, will leave... Uh, a little bit of moisture in its wake and it'll be a couple of days from now for it to get all the way over here all right so each degree of longitude so 50 to 51 degrees longitude the distance is about 60 nautical miles so this has a ways to go so this represents a couple of days at least and I think that it'll go on to develop get me a cup of water there so uh, the name would be Josephine if it does, and you know, don't, don't don't get too worked up about it just yet. We have plenty of time to watch and see. Let's see what the uh, speaking of watching and seeing, good old GFS analyzes it right there. Little pieces of energy down there, that vorticity. There is Alita's vorticity signature in the eastern Pacific, and then the outline of this massive ridge of high pressure covering the Atlantic Basin. No big troughs coming. The troughs way out here in the Midwest, upper Midwest. So anything coming across is not likely to go like that right now. We're not going to see too many fish storms, as they call them, anytime soon. So we put this uh, into motion um, 24 hours out. So this is Monday morning. It's definitely getting its act together. Another 24 hours out by Tuesday morning, south of that giant area of high pressure. Wednesday morning, yeah, I mean, it's trying. By Thursday morning, there's 96 hours. Small, but definitely showing up in the vorticity signature of the model. Um, even some of these other little bands here, look at that. You can even see some of the banding in the model. That's pretty cool. 
the computer models are getting better and better. They're not perfect. Uh, and then finally by day five here, this continues on generally to the west and west-northwest. Maybe by this time it's starting to feel some of that dry air. Maybe it races out ahead of it and gets ingested in there. We'll see. The models have struggled this year. We've seen that, obviously. So, you know, this could end up being that there's nothing here. The GFS was trying to develop Gonzalo all down here. You remember that? So maybe the GFS is not working well. I don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows for sure. Does it finally have it right? We'll see. I mean, the Euro, 24 hours out, 48, 72, 96, 120, pff, nothing to speak of. And a little impulse coming off Africa, but for the most part, the European model does not have anything in the main development region. And to be fair, the Euro usually doesn't do very well with tropical cyclogenesis out in the main development region. Sometimes it shows them, sometimes it doesn't. The GFS typically does better, I've, it's been my experience. But the problem, they tinker with these models, they do. They try to fix them. You get updates, you know, like your Windows or your Mac. You have an update available. Well, they update the models. They don't just program it with all the math and physics that they put in there and then just leave it. Um, they always try to improve it. And sometimes, you know, when you code stuff, all you coders out there, you fix one thing and you break something else. You know, you try to break or fix that broken thing and then you break something over here. So we'll see. Uh, I just, you know, the odds favor. I mean, we're going to be going into mid-August and all that that implies. I think it's going to develop and we'll just see if it does, then we'll take it from there. No reason to even speculate. Let's just see if I have, and it's not a matter of me being right. Let me just come back on again before I sign off. I'm not trying to be right. This isn't a contest. Um, I try to see if my instincts are on point. You know, that watching this for as long as I have, uh, you know, ever since I was a kid, like I talk about in the Hurricane Highway series, now streaming on YouTube and elsewhere, um, I've been watching it a long time, right? And so you just, you know, it helps you. Uh, and sometimes your instincts aren't, you know, well, I blew that one. You never know. But something just, come on. Everything seems to be there. I think logic would dictate that this will at least become a name storm out in the main development region. We'll just go with that and see what happens. Okie doke. As always, I'm on Twitter, at Hurricane Track. You're watching probably on YouTube or Facebook. And as promised, I'm doing more on Facebook, putting these videos on Facebook. The brand is Hurricane Track, easy to find, and we are supported by our fantastic folks at Patreon, through Patreon, via Patreon, crowdfunding. And it's the, it's the crowd. It's the crowd part of crowdfunding. Many people supporting a common cause. And in this case, hurricane coverage that's beyond anything you'll ever get on television. Just inherently so. Not even a knock on TV. It's what it is. Hey, that's a good tagline. Hurricane coverage beyond television. Uh, that's mine. I'm copywriting that. Copyright. This is a copyrighted feature of this program. There you go. Uh, but really, our patrons are, are who make this possible. So thank you all very much. All right. So tomorrow, Monday, it'll be a longer update because we're going to go over sea surface temperatures, anomalies, El Nino, La Nina, MJO, all kinds of news and headlines and whatever. So tune in tomorrow afternoon for even more. Until then, have a great rest of your Sunday afternoon. As always, thanks for tuning in and catching what I have to say. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. We will reconvene tomorrow afternoon.